30 years old and uh, I was born in 1984, um, which, which means that um, I was born with, sorry, this, these things. So I basically, uh, I grew up interactive. Um, I was raised with a computer in my hands and it was in my room as well, it was the first Macintosh. And uh, we used to play Nintendo 64 and my friends every Wednesday afternoon for you know, hours and hours and hours. Um, I've also ingested um, so many movies and series that I can count. So I'm definitely um, a child of the digital world. And um, the first encounter I've had with um, anything resembling um, interactive storytelling were those um, amazing um, choose-your-own-adventure game books that my mom uh, bought me when I was a kid. And the principle of these books, and you can't really see well in this image, but um, it were big uh, illustrations um, in which you could just choose different paths and um, decide whether you wanted to go see the dragon in the forest or go to the castle. And depending on your choices, you would end up somewhere else. Most of the, most of the time, you would end up uh, dead in a ditch. <laughs> But uh, the stories themselves uh, weren't very good. It was actually pretty bad stories, but um, you know, just the, the adventure and the exploration of all those illustrations, um, for me, were very immersive. So the story was bad, but the exploration was great. And um, you know, time went by, and I decided to forget about all of this, because I had to go to college, and I had to decide what I wanted to do with my life. So I was deeply persuaded that my goal was to become an astrophysicist. So really deeply, I really believe that I did math classes, physics classes for six to seven years. I, I, re I still love science and I really love science. I even went to NASA um, to go to the training camps and see if they would you know, take me in. And well, time went by and unfortunately my math grades were really, really bad and um, I don't know, maybe I watched Star Wars too much or something, but um, I just took some, and they also told me that only one person in a million would actually go to the space station. So I was thinking, okay, maybe um, it wasn't the actual job description that was interesting for me. It was um, the dream, it was the sensations that I thought it would feel, it was the, the story behind it, it was something uh, more um, of a fantasy. And so I took some time and I decided that uh, what I wanted to do was to tell stories. I wanted to build worlds and I wanted people to be immersed in the world that I would create. So I decided to go to the film school first. And then um, after a moment, I changed to uh, interaction design studies. So I, um, I exchanged my camera for these things. So. Um, instead of a camera, I had um, you know, VR helmets, um, sensors, um, some uh, strange um, beacons, uh, geolocalized beacons, um, some gyroscopes and drones to, to tell stories. And this really opened up my mind to uh, something totally different. Um, a way a, a story can play out was going to be uh, something else. And I was also a little bit overwhelmed because um, every week on Kickstarter there is another one of those technologies that pops out. So what do you do? <laughs> How do you work with them? Uh, what's the link? So I ab absolutely don't have the answer yet, but um, I can think of, um, of one link, and uh, one link is the user. So if you're going to do something uh, interactive, obviously there's a user, and uh, the user is going to control. This means that um, me, as a, as a storyteller, I, I, don't get, I don't get the control anymore. I cannot just tell my story and from A to Z in a linear way. I have to give some of that power away to the user. And, um, you know, we need more people who, um, you know, grasp these technologies and know how to write for them and become authors of those. Um, another important point that I learned is um, failure. So in interactive design is uh, a lot about failing to me. You need to fail all the time in order to get the project uh, forward, uh, meaning that you need your user to test what you're doing and very early in the beginning. And most of the time, they, they will tell you that what you did sucked. And so you take it in, <laughs> and then the next day you do something else, and you add to it and fail as many times as you can. 
Um, I want to show you just a couple of projects um, that, I, that I really like. Uh, the first one is from a British designer called Chris Oshie. Um, it's called um, Little Magic Stories, and the idea is that kids get to draw uh, on a piece of paper um, a characters and a, a narrative, and they just draw the, all, the, all those things, and then it all gets transposed into a stage. And then they are immersed in their own story, and they can um, interact with the elements that they've uh, drawn 30 minutes before. Um, another very neat project is uh, from uh, Marion Barret and Camille Attar, their um, Geneva and Paris team. And uh, they are mixing a tablet with uh, physical characters to, to tell um, um, a little tale, a, a story about dreams and fantasy. And um, what I really like about uh, this proposal, so it's not really a game, it's something else. It's really more um, of a story and adventure. And uh, the kids get to be, and the adults as well, um, they are just collaborating together uh, in front of the tablet and playing with those little characters and trying to help them out uh, through the story. So there are many proposals like that. Uh, right, there are many projects like that right now. And basically, they have no real definition. Um, I've been showing my, my projects a lot uh, at different places and conferences. And every time they fall into a different category, sometimes they're called Transmedia, cross-media, multimedia, sometimes it's augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, alternate reality. Sometimes it's an interactive ebook, interactive comic book, and there, there are many more. And uh, for the same project, I mean. So I think, um, you know, we were in a time where we're exploring and we also need to find um, some grammar and some syntax to work with. And so there are... Um, that's a good example uh, that I like. It's from the uh, Volumic uh, in Paris. It's called the, the Toolkit for uh, Digital Authors. So it basically shows uh, all the features that can be used on an iPad and a smartphone to um, create a story world. All of the different elements here that uh, are available when you are an author or a storyteller or an interaction designer to create new uh, concepts. and. Um, you know, um, I always think that uh, cinema, um, theater, uh, literature, they're all, they all have rules that are pretty much set in the ground now. So, you know, there are guidebooks. Um, you wouldn't really dare to, to change anything about them. But um, at the beginning, it wasn't like that. And it took some time to evolve, to make them evolve. And, um, for example, uh, the first films m made by the Lumiere brothers um, they consisted of one shot and only daily life events, such as the eating baby and the train coming to the station. And, you know, well, probably all know the train coming to the station um, was pretty scary for the first time it went by. People th thought the train was going to come out of the screen and crash on the audience, and they didn't need 3D or Oculus for that. They <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> And, you know, and editing wasn't either um, in, in the question uh, at this time. You wouldn't edit a film and there was no, um, you know, fiction as well. It was all about daily life events. And um, I don't know if you, we've heard him, Georges Méliès. Uh, I'm an absolute fan. Well, he's sort of the, he invented special effects and um, he was also the first one to uh, make fiction films. And so he dared to take what, you know, what was there and, and challenge. He researched a lot in his studio, which was the first, um, I think it's the first studio in France for cinema. And um, what I really wanted to say today is that um, we need to explore more, we need to dare more, and we need to fail more, a lot more, and take some risks and uh, explore new things because um, all of these technologies are there for us, but if we don't do anything consistent, if we don't put um, the right content, um, well, nothing will happen. And right now, everything is possible, so thank you. <laughs>